I have my father's eyes. The heart-filled genes are strong. Like, make no doubt about it. My father's genes uh, run deep in me. Uh, and positionally, I am my father's son because his DNA is in me. But I, like many of you, grew up my middle school and high school years not really feeling positionally aligned with my father. As a matter of fact, a lot of times I just didn't feel like I measured up. I didn't feel like I was the person that he expected me to be or wanted me to be. I would not leave the house without him always saying, remember who you are and who you represent. And, and that got me out of a lot of, kept me out of a lot of trouble, but it also put some extreme pressure on me. And it wasn't really until I became an adult that my father and I began to communicate a little bit better. And, uh, you know, just heads up, if you have uh, kids that communication line is going to get better, and there's going to be a, a point, students, where the light comes on uh, in your life, and you're going to give your parents a little bit more grace, and, and somehow we as parents, we give our kids even more grace. As we get older, communication lines begin to open up, and my dad and I worked it out, but I'm just saying that positionally, as my father's son, sometimes I didn't feel like it. And I'm grateful today, I don't know about you, but I'm grateful today that as a son of God or a daughter of God, that I don't have to work for my position. You know why? Because Christ has done the work. And this is what Paul has done in all of Galatians up to this point is he's helped us understand positionally who we are in Christ and how that your works get you nowhere closer to Christ, like your works, uh, you can't work your way into salvation. You can't work your way out of salvation. It's a gift, okay? And so we've been looking at this whole, uh, Paul introduced to us justification by faith. We, we, we're learning that it's um, through faith alone in Christ alone, um, through grace alone, that we find ourselves as Christ's followers. Anybody grateful for grace today? Come on, God's riches at Christ's expense, nothing that we can do to earn it, nothing that you can do to earn God's love, to have him love you more, and there's nothing you can do to make him love you any less. And as a son of my biological father, there was times I felt loved maybe less, and I think there was some communication gap there. But I want to just really encourage you and point you to the fact today that if you are a Christ follower, positionally, you are son and daughter of the king. And there is nothing, absolutely nothing that you can do to work your way out of it. Okay. And so that gives us a place of moving forward. Now, we're going to read uh, all of Galatians 5, 6 through 26. I'm just going to read all the text that we're going to get to this week and next week, but we're only going to handle about two verses of this, 16, 17, and 18, three verses of this. So um, before we get there, let me throw this statement out to you. It kind of gives you a headway of where we're going today, um, and that is this. It's through Jesus and the work of Jesus that God has given us the position of a son or a daughter and the power to live like a son or a daughter, okay? So most of us, I think, can understand, at least in our head, what it means to belong positionally to our Heavenly Father, that Christ has made the way, and we identify ourselves as sons or daughters of the King, sons and daughters of our Heavenly Father. But, but most of us miss out on the latter part, the power. Y'all say power. We get the position, at least for the most part, some of us still have some identity work to do, but we so often miss out on the power because Jesus didn't come to just die for you positionally. He came to die to bring you power, to give you the power to act like a son, to live like a daughter of the king. And so if I had an outline today of Galatians, it would go something like this, and this will sort of outline our message today. When, when Christ came, when we put our faith in him, he gives us a new position. Y'all say position? Now then he wants to give us new power. Y'all say power? And now then after the power, we'll find ourselves walking in a new purpose or practice. Y'all say practice. So it's position, power, 
practice or, or purpose. So with that in mind, listen to Galatians chapter 5, verses 15 or 16 and 20 through 26. Paul says, but I say, walk by the spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the desires of the flesh are against the spirit and the desires of the spirit are against the flesh. For these are opposed to each other to keep you from doing the things you want to do. But if you're led by the spirit, you're not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are evident. Sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. I warn you, as I warned you before, that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, Against such things, there is no law. And those who belong to Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. And if we live by the Spirit, let us also keep in step with the Spirit and let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. It's a pretty powerful section of Scripture and I wanted to take the time to read it because in it, we could see clearly a position given to us by Christ, a power that empowers us to be who we're called to be, who we're meant to be, who we can't be alone and then a way of new life and a way of living. But I want you to think about old living for a minute. As a matter of fact, I want you to think about your pet sin. I mean, the one that you can't stop committing. It's the one that you just cannot seem to whoop, okay? You think about it for a second? I can give you some suggestions if you want, okay? Lust, guys, if that's it, don't think about it too long. Okay. Maybe it's anger. Maybe you just have a really hard time with your, with, with your temper. Maybe it's envy. Maybe it's jealousy. Maybe your insecurity causes you to do things that aren't, God's best for your life. What is the pet sin? What is, that, what is that thing in your life that you just can't stop doing? I'm talking about the thing that frustrates you. Come on, y'all know what I'm talking about. You're like, it! I did it again, and I said I wouldn't do it again, right? That's what I'm talking about. Will you bring it to your mind for a minute? When you have it, raise your hand. I'm just going to wait till everybody's hand's raised. Because <laughs> if you don't have your hand raised, I can tell you your sin. It's called Pride. Because we all have them. We all have them. We all have these pet sins. And I think one of the most frustrating things for Christ followers is we have these desires and these things inside of us that's contrary to God. And yet we, we find ourselves doing them over and over and over again. So I want to I lead out by asking you two questions, okay? And these are just get real questions and sort of uh, answer them in your mind. In your mind, but here, here's the first question. Um, speaking of your pet sin, the one you like really doing, okay. If you could stop doing it, would you really want to stop? Hello. If you could stop, would you really want to stop? Second question: If there were a way to stop. Would you really want to know how to stop? Okay. In this section, Paul gives us the answer to the frustration of wanting to stop, but not seeming to have the power to stop, have the focus to stop, at least consistently. I mean, I think all of us can bat 200. You know, we can win some of the time in that pet sin, but most of the time, that pet sin just lingers around and we keep doing the same one over and over and over again. I wanna to talk to you though about a new power that you have as a Christ follower. If you're a Christ follower today, Paul begins to help us understand that 
within you, within me as a Christ follower, we have power to live in a way that we didn't have before we made a faith reception. We find it in verse Galatians 5, verse 16. He gives us some instruction. Here's what he says. He says, but I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. Okay? That's the answer to our frustration. Right there. He gives us the answer. But I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify. You will not do the thing that you say you don't want to do, but you do anyway. That thing that you keep tripping up on, that thing that you say, man, it's just got such a stronghold on me, that, that thing that's just the way my dad was, it's the way I'm going to be. He says, if you walk by the Spirit, you will not, say not, you will not gratify the desires of the flesh, okay? So to walk by the Spirit, we got to understand because Paul packs a lot of punch with his words, There's a lot in it that we've got to understand that if we just do a flyby, we might miss the the importance and the potency of the words. To walk by the Spirit, what he's saying is to live by rule of the Spirit. By rule of the Spirit, not the rule of the Spirit. Because that's some of us, we think Christianity is just about rules. Don't drink, don't smoke, don't chew. Don't date the girls that do, right? We just, (laughs) and we just think Christianity's rules. No, you know what Christianity is about? It's about who rules you, who reigns in you, who who, who truly has control. What truly rules you? I want you to think about just this past week. What ruled you? What controlled you? What was your driving force in life? What, how did you make decisions? How did you process your day? So often, we, we don't live ruled by, walking by the Spirit. Instead, we're ruled by our flesh. So what are you ruled by? Insecurity, desire, passion, lust, envy, jealousy. I don't know. What are you ruled by? But what's ruling you? Because if we can look and if we just be honest, and that's really what today's talk is about, honesty. We all want honesty. We want transparency, except when it comes to me, (laughs) except when it comes to you. We want everybody else to be transparent, but not us. We want to hide our stuff. We don't want our own stuff coming out. But everybody else, bring it out, bring it out, bring it out. Show us what you got. Dude, you're not being real, not being transparent. How about you? How about you? Today's message is about being honest. What is ruling you? What's ruling me? Paul says to walk by or be ruled by the Spirit and will not desi- and gratify the desires of the flesh. This word flesh is a very interesting word. In the Greek, the word is sarx. It's not talking about your skin. Okay, y'all skin's looking very brown now. Come on, a little tan got going. Let's go. I was out in the yard yesterday hacking a bush that I hadn't hacked in about eight years. So I got a little color on my skin. I'm not talking about your skin when he's saying flesh here. What he's talking about is sinful desire, sinful nature, okay? And what we have to understand, and Paul kind of play, lays it out here, um, there's a war between your sinful nature and the spirit, that which God desires, God's best for you. And the key, though, is that it's a spiritual battle, okay? It's a spiritual battle. And most of us are trying to win a spiritual battle with natural strength. Even in regards to that pet sin, we think we can whoop something spiritually, physically. And it's like showing up to a gunfight with a knife. That's not a knife, but this is a knife. No, still, you're going to die when you try to show up to that kind of fight. If you try to show up to a spiritual fight, which is what we do daily. Your day-to-day life is a spiritual battle. 
It's as real as you are sitting here physically. There is a spiritual realm. You are a spiritual being. You're just housing spiritual. It's what your body is. And inside your body, there is a war raging. And this is the frustration we have because we feel the rage of the war inside of us, okay? And we need a power greater than our own if we're gonna win the war. Because let's just be honest, if you could have whooped it, you would have already whooped it, right? I know some of y'all, y'all some mean folk. I mean, when y'all get your mindset on something, y'all are gritty. Y'all could take care of stuff. That's North Idaho, except this. It keeps whooping you. It's got your number. Could it be you're showing up to a spiritual battle with natural weapons? Paul says, let's flip it. Paul says, let's stop living frustrated and start living free. Okay? We need the power of the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit. What does the Holy Spirit do? I mean, he does so much. He convicts us, he comforts us, he uh, corrects us. He's doing that right now, by the way. He guides us. He he gives us spiritual gifts. He, He teaches us what to pray when we don't know what to pray. He prays when we don't know what to pray. He empowers us. He gives us power from on high, okay? So when we are weak, we're actually our strongest. But we do have to do something. It's not just that you accept Christ and you get a dose of the Holy Ghost and now all of a sudden, you're gonna never struggle with sin ever again. Doesn't work that way. And all the Christians said, doesn't work that way. Now, now some churches are set up in a way that make you feel that that's the way it is. And so if you don't, Pretend you're perfect, then you don't fit into the club. And here in our faith family, we don't pretend we're perfect, okay? We've been made perfect in the sight of God, but we are being made perfect, okay? It's called, here's a word that nobody likes to say anymore. It's called sanctification. Paul shifts gears. He moves from being justified by faith understanding my position in Christ. Now he says, let's talk about freedom found in sanctification. Now, again, when some of us think about sanctification, we think about tight and white. We just think like uptight, white, no fun. No, sanctification leads to freedom. Sanctification leads to all these things, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, self-control. That's what sanctification leads towards. Flesh, the, the, the works of the flesh are obvious. Idolatry, come on, sounds like a day in the life of America. Sensuality, sexual acts, right? It's like all these things outside of God's design for our lives. But we, so we have something to do. It's not just like, oh, I don't struggle anymore. And Paul tells us what to do. He says, walk. (laughs) I love that simple. Walk by what? The spirit, faith, yes. Your faith engages the spirit. We're both right. Walk by the spirit. So how do we walk by the Spirit? If he says, if I walk by the Spirit, I won't keep doing the same thing I said I wouldn't do. I, will, I can overcome this compulsion inside of me. I can overcome this addiction. I, if, if, how can I do it? How do I walk by the Spirit? Well, it's walking step by step in total dependence, in total surrender, directed and empowered by Him. Easier said than done. Come on, anybody that's ever done this knows that it's easier said than done. There's some things that's got to die. There's some things that you have to kill. And I'm just gonna go ahead and say this. It was towards the end of last week, or it'll be at the end of next week's message, so you're gonna hear it twice. But the Bible talks about the end of Galatians. It says that you crucify the flesh. 
Do you know when you crucify something, it doesn't die immediately? It's torturous. And someone who's been crucified either bleeds out or suffocates. And so you have this flesh, this war raging within you, and there's some things that you've got to suffocate. There's some things that you got to bleed out. Just let it bleed out. And it may take some time. It may take some time. But this is the process of sanctification. Let me just show it to you. Walk in the Spirit. Walk by the Spirit. What does that look like? It's one step of faith at a time. We walk by the Spirit when the Spirit desire inside of us is stronger than the flesh desire inside of us. That's when we know we're walking by the Spirit. We walk in the Spirit when the desires produced by the Spirit are stronger than the desires produced by the flesh. So, so the question is, if that's true, how can I get these strong desires produced by the Spirit? right? How do I beef up? Like, are there some, you know, uh, some supplements I need to take? Is there, is there this, this regimen I need to be on? Do I need to do 75 hard spiritually? Like, what is going to beef up my spiritual desires so that it can defeat my fleshly desires. How can I do it? Well, well, walking by the Spirit, we got to understand this foundationally. Walking by the Spirit isn't about getting the Spirit's help. Walking by the Spirit is you realizing that it's your only hope. Because again, if you could have whooped it, you'd have already whooped it. Okay? So, so in other words, you can't whoop inside of you your flesh. Only the Spirit can do that. Only the Spirit of the living God and so there's something with just owning that, resting in that, facing that, going, I'm not self-sufficient. I'm not all powerful. God, you are. And so I need your help. You don't just need a little bit of help. It's your only hope. The Holy Spirit is your only hope. And I believe that maybe God brought some of you here today just to remind you of that. The reason you're frustrated is because you think you need a little help. Got a little help down here. Yeah. Got to go to church just so I can get a little help. But then I'm going to live like hell the rest of the week. When he's your only hope. He's, he's my only hope. He's the only way that I can be empowered to walk by the Spirit. It's about being enabled to do something that I cannot do. Okay? So, so walking by the Spirit is something the Holy Spirit enables me to do by producing in me stronger desires than the, the desires of my flesh, okay? What's incredible to me is uh, how synced up all script, Scripture is, okay? It, it, it never speaks over itself, and it, and it never, you know, there's, there's never a mistake that, oh, it said this in the Old Testament, and then it said this in the New Testament. No, it's all synced up, Right? Ezekiel chapter 36 in the Old Testament, this is before Christ came, before the Holy Spirit came and he sent the Holy Spirit. Look at what it says in verse 26. He says, I will give you a new heart and a new spirit. I'll give you a new heart position. I'll give you a new spirit power. I will put within you and I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. And this is what's incredible. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk. How crazy is that? In other words, I will empower you to do what you cannot do on your own. I will, not you. I will put my spirit in you and cause you to walk. What, what that is saying translated is, is, I will move you to walk in my statues. I will give you desires to walk in purity. I'll give you desires to walk in my ways. I'll give you desires that you didn't have before. Anybody ever experienced new desire? 
Anybody ever experienced new freedom? Anybody ever experienced like, you know what? I used to be that knucklehead and now I'm still been a little bit of that knucklehead, but I'm at least, I'm a little different now, right? It's not about memorization. It's about motivation. And your motivation shows up by your strongest desires in your life. So, so how do I get free from my addictions? How do I get free from condemnation, free from my compulsions? Again, Paul says what? Walk by the Spirit. I pray that that repeats over and over in your mind this week. Walk by the Spirit. Walk by the Spirit. Oh, walk by the Spirit. When the temptation walks by, say, walk by the Spirit. I'm going to walk by the Spirit. What happens when we walk? Just think about it. We take one step at a time, and when we walk, ultimately, we land in a different place. Okay? I'm going to demonstrate for you. You ready? Here we go. Y'all don't seem too amazed. Now, if I had done the gritty, then you would have at least laughed. If I'd have done some backflips, it may have been, oh. But what did I do? I simply walked. Paul says, walk by the Spirit. Now, some of us have this idea that the Holy Spirit, when the Holy Spirit shows up, it's going to show up in signs and wonders and tongues of fire and people falling out and the banner flags have to come out. And that's the only way the Holy Spirit um, moves. And some of you like that and others, you roll your eyes at that. But guess what? Sometimes that's how God moves. Some God, time God heals miraculously in an instant. Sometimes people are set free in a moment, but all the time, y'all say all, we find freedom when we walk by the Spirit, day by day, okay? So it's not like, oh, instant, I'm 100% changed and I'm never gonna have these desires this time because he, he shows us that there's actually this ongoing war inside of us, okay? And what I know to be true is that as I have learned to walk day by day, here's what's happened. I used to be there, but now I'm over here. Anybody else? Okay. I used to think this way, but now I'm thinking that way. I used to have this perspective, now I have that perspective. I used to live by fear, now I live by faith. I used to live driven by my lust, now I'm driven by the love of Christ. I used to be driven by compulsion. Now I'm driven by my passion for Jesus. And it ain't been pretty. If you've seen my life up close, if you've walked with me, you know what? Like you, I've stumbled and I've fallen and I've messed up. I've messed up this week just like you did. But you know what? I get back up and what do I do? And if I will commit, and if you will commit to taking one step of faith day by day, you're going to look up one day, my friend, and you're not going to be the same person. Your life's going to change. Your mindset's going to change. Your perspective is going to change. Your purity is going to change. Your desire is going to, I know it's frustrating. The desires inside of you, they're waging war, and you're like, ah, but you got to go for a walk. Daily go for a walk. Walk by the Spirit. Paul says, walk by the Spirit. And if you do this daily, you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. But we got to understand a little bit more about the flesh. He says, for the desires of the flesh are against the Spirit, and the desires of the Spirit are against the flesh. For these are opposed. Y'all say opposed. Let's get ready to rumble. Right? They're opposed to each other. And now, fighting. Oh, that was pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> right. For these are opposed to each other to keep you from doing the things you want to do. But if you're led by the Spirit, you're not under the law. Now, some of you think as Christ followers, you're like, it's, it's just not working for me. I mean, I, I see my wife and, you know, she's like a little saint. 
I see this guy over here and he's like, doesn't have the struggles I have. Like it's not, Christianity is not working for me. It's not working for me because I still have these desires. And here are these people talking about new desires and new way of life. And man, if I don't just want to go to the club, if I don't just want to go and do my own thing, the old way. I know when I first became a Christ follower, I was doing relationships all wrong, all kinds of wrong. And one of the things that I had to learn to do was trust God in that area of my life day by day because I had a desire to keep wanting to do what I used to do. Can anybody relate? And it felt like a war inside of me. You know why? Because you still have your flesh, sarks, still inside of you. I like to think of the flesh as a, like a little dictator on the inside of me. Nang, 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 nang. Okay? You just need to think about inside of you, the, the flesh, it's like a little dictator, okay? And that little dictator, because he's a dictator, is trying to tell you what to do. But if you have accepted Christ into your life. You now have a position as a son or daughter of a king. So guess what? The dictator has been deposed. He no longer has control. Now, there used to be, oh, he told you nine, 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 and you nine, 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 nine. He said, you want to go to the club? Yes, I do. Okay. You want to get drunk? Yes, I do. You want to slander? You want to gossip? You want to tear that person down? Nah, nah, nah. Yes, I do. And you had no say so in the matter because the dictator is in control. But when you become a Christ follower, the dictator is deposed. And now all of a sudden, if you walk by the spirit, you have a new ruler, someone else reigning. And what's incredible, just look at it in your life. Just, just think about it again, the pet sin. It, I know it's got great kicks, but doesn't it have wicked kickbacks? Oh man, it brings conviction. It brings isolation. It brings shame. It oftentimes hurts people. It oftentimes causes you to isolate. It oftentimes causes you to push people away. In other words, Anything that's outside of God's best for our life, this sin nature, it leads towards destruction. That little dictator wants to just bring you to damnation. That's what the dictator wants to do. But the spirit of God in you wants to lead you to freedom, life, and liberty. And that freedom is yours, and that freedom is mine. And what Paul is helping us see here is that we have the same spirit of God that raised Christ from the dead. The same spirit that hovered over creation and brought life and brought order and brought freedom is the same spirit that lives in you. What did Jesus say when he shows up? He showed up and said, I come and I bring the spirit. He says, listen, it's, it's for your good that I go. Because if I don't go, you don't get the promised one, the comforter, the one that's going to empower you, the one that's going to help you win the battle, the daily battle in your life, okay? The flesh produces one kind of desire and the spirit produces other. That's what he's saying, okay? Would anybody just be honest and saying, that's going on in the inside of me? Okay, I'm the only one. That's okay. I'll be vulnerable. That's okay. That's okay. Here's the question. In that area of your life, again, let's just bring up the pet sin. How strong is the opposition? Is there any opposition? Remember the first question, if you could stop, would you really want to stop? Is there any opposition? If there's no opposition, because it says that they're in opposition with one another. They're in a cage fight in your soul daily, okay? Between your flesh and the spirit of God. Is there opposition? If there's not opposition, one of two things is true. Either one, you're dead spiritually. You go, well, wait, I grew up in church. I was dedicated and 
uh, I went through confirmation does not necessarily mean you're in relationship with Jesus. Well, man, I, I've done more good than bad. Works doesn't do it. There, there, there has to come a place of surrender, a place of crying out for forgiveness for your sin, realizing that you self-destruct and believing that Jesus Christ paid the debt for your sin and made a way for your freedom. And you called on his name to save you, okay? So if there's no opposition, either one, there's no opposition because all you have is flesh. Or, number two, maybe there's little opposition because you are actually in that area of your life walking by the flesh rather than walking by the Spirit. And this is where it gets real. This is where we decide if we really want to walk in freedom if we really wanna take hold of all that Christ has done for us, because we always act out of our strongest desires. Did you mess up this week? Did you do the thing that you told God you wouldn't do again this week? We gotta face the facts. We always act out of our strongest desires. Oh, but I love Jesus. Well, in that area of your life, in that area of my life where I keep messing up, my action follows desire, which means my desire for self is greater than my desire for Christ. Well, I'll just, I'll just commit to coming to church every week. I'll, I'll just listen to worship songs and I'll commit to doing daily devotions and I'll just, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna, I'm, I'm just gonna, I... and all those things could help you be in a place for power. But as long as you, I is leading, you lose. As long as it's what I'm going to do versus the Holy Spirit being my only hope. Me just being honest with what's going on inside of me. This makes me get honest about my strongest desire. This makes me get honest about the strongest desires that push me in life, that move me in life. And how do I know what strongest desires are in my life? The cage match. Every day, there's a cage match between your pet sin and the Spirit of God within you. Question, which one most often wins? Which one comes out the victor? Which one gets to put on the belt? Which one gets Joe Rogan beside him and going, bro, incredible win today. Right? Right? There's areas in my life that I don't like that answer. How about you? Because there's area in my life where the old man's the victor and I'm doing the walk of shame. Paul says, hey, listen, it's for freedom that Christ has set you free. You remember that verse? It's for freedom that Christ has set you free. And we have to be honest about the desires inside of us that are contrary to the Spirit of God if we're gonna walk in the freedoms of God. So today is about honesty. Today is about beginning to take the first step of freedom, okay? Of overcoming that pet desire, desire uh, sin in your life, okay? Here's where it starts. Bring it into the light. Yeah. Bring it into the light. Be honest. Just look in your life and go, what's the cage match? What's the daggum fight that goes on over and over in my life? Turn the lights on. Bring it into the light. Tell your wife. Tell a trusted brother. Tell a girl that you could trust. Say, hey, this fight inside of me, it's whooping me. Bring it into the light. 
okay? Bring it into the light. And here's what's so amazing about Jesus. When we bring those things into the life, see, the, the enemy would say, cover it. Keep it in the dark. But what's so amazing about the Spirit of God, this is beautiful. What we cover, this is what's happening today. What we cover eventually, Christ is gonna uncover. It's gonna happen. Bible says your sins will find you out, either on this side or on the other, but they will find you out. And aren't you tired of living the paranoid life anyway? Okay. What you cover, God's gonna uncover. But this is amazing. What you uncover, God says, I got it. And he covers you with grace. And he covers you with mercy and he covers you with love and he covers you with purpose and he powers you to walk in freedom. Walk by the Spirit. And if I walk by the Spirit day by day denying myself, day by day saying, I'm honest, God, like I really, really want to go do that. This is what's waging. It's You got to be honest about it. I, I've had those times in my life where I've just had to say it. God, I want to do what's contrary to you. And God, if I try to beat this, I lose. So God, change my desires. Have you ever prayed that prayer? Created me a clean heart, oh God. That's it. Uncover. Uncover it your first step. Trust God with it. It's your first step. Be honest with it. Recognize the war within. See the cage match. Be honest with who's most often the victor. That's the first step. Then the second step is surrender and saying, okay, it's yours. And God, my way's not working. So not my will. Christ modeled it, but God, yours be done. We're going to stop right there. It's enough for me. I got work to do. How about y'all? <laughs> I don't even feel like preaching the third. I want to go do some work because I'm tired of being frustrated. How about you? Let's walk in freedom. Let me pray for you. Let's do some work right now. Just some, some private work between you and God. Just right now, let's do some work. Every, every head bowed and every eye closed. I want you to picture the cage match right now. What most often do you wrestle with in obeying God? What is it? See the fight right now, the war within. Now turn the lights on. Just confess it to God. Say, God, this is whooping me. This sin is strong in me. Just confess it. Uncover it. And now say, God, forgive me. Give me fresh desire. Create in me a new heart. Create in me a clean heart, God. And now see yourself taking the first step. And now the second. Father, thank you for next steps. Thank you for empowering us. And Father, I pray this week that we will picture ourselves taking next steps daily in you as we walk by the Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said,